So, Tiny, what are some of the special places in London in terms of restaurants or places you'd like to come back to when you've been away from home? Um, well, I mean, for me, I think why London is so interesting is because depending on what part of London you're in, you obviously get an overall sense of British culture, but I think that there's loads of all the little, other, all the other cultures that, you know, um, are within British culture that I guess make London culture especially so exciting. So as a South London boy of Nigerian um, heritage, when I come back, even though I don't live in South London anymore, I like to come back to, you know, like a Nigerian restaurant in South London or, you know, just around the corner from my studio, there's, there's like a takeaway yeah. place where you get, you know, a cheap and cheerful five or six pound meal of rice, beans, some sort of like stew, tomato stew and beans, like almost like worker basic food, like yeah. street food. Yeah. Um, and for me, especially as I get older as well, like that, that kind of reminds me of like mum's cooking, that reminds me of, you know, just, just being at home and, and, and my culture. But then even just as a kid, there was, um, like chicken and chips is huge in British culture. Yes. In fact, to be honest, I don't even know that many other places in the world where chicken and chips yeah. is as huge. I know we have obviously KFC from America, but mm. just chicken and chip shops on yeah, the corner. And um, I think Morley's for South London especially was the main one. And so just the other day I did a pop-up shop in, in Shoreditch and I wanted to put all the different things um, that reminded me of my youth. It was almost like a South London nostalgic experience. And so I had a barber shop in there oh, wow. um, yeah. that was giving free haircuts to anyone who would want to come because barber shops are very, very big in, in, in especially, you know, um, working class communities. Yes. You know, the barber shop would be a social place that everybody would gather and talk as well as get a haircut or a shape up. So I had one of those. I had my bedroom, well, something that looked like my bedroom with all the old game consoles, Nintendo, Mega Drive, oh, wow. um, yeah. and everything that I just played when I was growing up. And then I had a Morley's mm -hmm. uh, fried chicken spot. So I spoke <laughs> to the people from Morley's, worked out a deal with them, and then they just provided for the three days free chicken and chips. Oh, and wonderful. it was crazy. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was like a roadblock. So basically, chicken and chips culture is very, very big within like London youth yes. culture. There's even a, a guy that's um, on YouTube at the moment called the Chicken Connoisseur. Oh. He goes around to each different chicken shop and he does like a review on the quality of chicken, the quality of the fries, the and it's like getting millions of views on the internet. Wow. So it is very, very, um, it's, a, it, it's a big player in youth culture. So. That I would recommend anyone that comes to London yes. to find the best chicken and chip shop and just try it, just for the novelty yeah. of it as well. But, you know, equally, I feel like there are places that I, I, I've... When I moved to Plumstead, there was a lot of, like, Asian culture there. There was a lot of Indian culture there. I have a lot of Asian friends. Um, just around the corner from Plumstead and obviously other parts of London, there's strong Irish culture in yes. places. Um, there's strong Italian cultures in places. We have even a little Italy just by yeah. Grazing Road. Um, there's Brazilian culture in certain places or South American culture. If you go to Elephant and Castle, you can get yourself a nice Colombian meal, a nice, you know, because the, I guess the, just the people of Colombia that came here naturally mm -hmm. migrated over there. Um, there's, there's Sri Lankan culture here. There's other parts of African culture here. There's even Chinese. Mm -hmm. they have Ch obviously, everywhere has a Chinatown, yeah. but, you know, we definitely have that. So I think in terms of restaurants, I like to eat, so I could bore you with, like, a <laughs> list of all different types of restaurants, but it really just mm -hmm. depends on the type of person you are, I guess. Any other ones now that you like going to? 
Oh, now I've got a whole load. I've got a whole load. Um, so even in this SC area, there is the sea containers. Have you heard of the sea containers? It's in the Mondrian Hotel. Oh. So, so they opened the Mondrian in SC1. And yeah. obviously, the last the Mondrian I saw was in LA and New York. Yes. So it's yes. come over. Yep. They did a big launch, and they have an amazing restaurant in there called Sea Containers. Have to try that. Okay. Um, and then one of my favorite ones is Clos Maggiore. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> it's basically um, it's basically just by Covent Garden, and it's one of the most romantic, beautiful restaurants I've ever been to in my life. The food is incredible. It's voted the most re romantic restaurant in London. Like fact, yeah. I stand by that. Come and find me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> but that restaurant is amazing. Super hard to get into. I've tried everything. Sometimes you try and walk up on the door. Yeah. Sometimes, but it genuinely is really hard to get into. They, they seat you, yes. you, you can sit inside, but then they also can sit you in this courtyard. It's like a oh, what, like wow. an outdoor space and there's flowers and it's beautiful. And the food is incredible, so you should try that. Okay. Um, have you been to Mossaman's? Yes, yeah, yeah. beautiful. So, Mossaman's, yeah. That's a yeah. very good call. Yeah, yeah. Mossaman's is, I mean, if you're going to get in, I don't yeah. know if they're going to let you in, but <laughs> you know, Mossaman's, I would definitely recommend you go and get some food in Mossaman's. And then, obviously, we have classic old school in Knightsbridge, Mr. Chow. Yeah. I'm still a big fan of it. Mm. I remember, like, again, I discovered a lot of these things through traveling. And so the first Mr. Chow I went to was in New York, I believe. And then I didn't, I was like, oh, London, man, we need to catch up. Someone was like, what are you talking about? We've had <laughs> Mr. Chow here for yonks. And so I went there, loved it, loved the service there. Um, Asia de Cuba as well yep. in the uh, St. Martin's St. Martin's Lane Hotel. Yep. Yeah, Asia de Cuba is really good. Then I would even say the Arts Club, the food at the Arts Club. Yes. And off of, on Dover Street is yeah. very, very good. They've got a great Japanese restaurant there. So I'd recommend that you try that. Um, and then I'm a big like fan of, of breakfast and mm. brunch mm. and like I, I love Me it. Too. I love it. So <laughs> In Hackney, there's a place called The Pavilion. Yeah. And if you want to get, I think the, 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 it's an English guy who's married to a Sri Lankan lady. So like I said, the good thing about London is everybody infuses the cultures with one another. And so he's somehow been able to make the best British brunch. But then there's also like a Sri Lankan side menu. So if you want some like lentils or you want some stuff there, really clever. They Everything is locally sourced. They locally source their milk, their bread, their everything. Really, really good place to get breakfast and brunch. My favorite place in London. Hi, I'm Tanya Breyer, and thank you for watching Trailblazers on CNBC Life. If you want to watch another episode, just click on the videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thank you so much for watching.